The purpose of this video is to talk carefully through the language involved in the proof of this theorem. The theorem says if n is an even integer, then n squared is an even integer. Proof. Well, before we can even get started, we will need some definition of evenness. We will need to know what it means in terms of some more manipulable mathematics. Here's the standard definition of evenness. An integer n is even if it has the form n equals 2k for some integer k. Let's spend a little bit of time with the definition. So the, the usual form of a mathematical definition is to say um, what it is you're defining, if, and then what the definition is. So in this case, an integer is even. That's what we're defining, if and then the meaning of evenness. It has the form n equals 2k for some integer k. So let's verify it with a couple of examples. So how do we know that the integer 6 is even? We know it's even because it has the form 6 equals 2 times 3, where 3 is an integer. We know that the number 10 is even because it has the form 10 equals 2 times 5, where 5 is an integer. So what the definition is asking for is that there is some integer which doubled produces your number. So it doesn't ask that all integers doubled produce your number. 6 is not even because 6 is 2 times 5. It's only even because 6 is 2 times 3. There just has to exist one, and it is even as soon as there exists one number you can double, one integer you can double to obtain your number. And it's very important that it's an integer. For example, three is not even. We don't want this definition to tell us that three is even. Where does the definition fail for three? Three can be written as two times something. It can be written as two times three halves. The definition fails in that three halves is not an integer. And in fact, there's no integer which you can double to make three. There are only rational numbers that you can double to make three. OK, so let's go back to our proof. So this is an if-then statement. That means it has hypotheses. In our case, the hypotheses, the if part, is the phrase n is an even integer. The conclusion, the then part, is n squared is an even integer. So the method of direct proof is the most direct method to prove an if-then statement. And what that refers to is simply the fact that we will assume the hypotheses and deduce the conclusion. Think of the proof as a little challenge. Um, you are tasked with showing for any even integer that someone hands you that its square is again even. So someone might come up to you and hand you a 6. You square it and obtain 36 and point out that that's even and you've accomplished your task. Then they might come up to you with a 10. You square that, get a 100, and show that that's even. And you've satisfied the requirement. The challenge comes in that what you need to do is write down something on a piece of paper which will stand in your place, which will be able to accept any challenge and deduce the conclusion. So this is essentially a recipe you have to write, an algorithm you have to give, so that a monkey or a machine, when faced with a, a 6 or a 10, can show that the square is even. It has to work for any challenge that might be brought, no matter how big or negative or what have you. So what we do is we start by assuming only what the theorem assumes, that n is an even integer. We do not know if it's 6 or 10 or any other integer. We suppose simply that we have been handed an even integer. So we can't make any assumptions about its size or whether it's negative or what particular number it is. And yet we still have to explain how we would meet that challenge. We want to prove that n squared is an even integer under only the assumption that n is an even integer. OK, so the mathematical language for this um, is generally the word suppose. Suppose uh, indicates that you are making an assumption. Um, not all assumptions are warranted. In the case of an if-then proof, a direct proof, you may assume the hypotheses because you are only tasked with proving the conclusion under those hypotheses. So it's safe to restrict yourself to those hypotheses. But you can't go supposing um, any other magical things that you would like to be true. So we're allowed only to suppose that n is an even integer. Now we're done with the phase of uh, um, assuming our hypotheses. Okay. 
Now um, we want to use the definition. Suppose n is an even integer. Well, now we know that n is an even integer, but evenness needs to be unpacked. We need to unpack the definition so that we have something we can work with. It's much more concrete to have the equation n equals 2k. So we're simply going to replace the phrase is an even integer with its meaning has the form n equals 2k for some integer k. The word then at the beginning of the sentence just indicates that a logical step has occurred. The step in this case is unraveling a definition or unpacking a definition is usually what it's called. And someone might even write a uh, comma by definition at the end of this sentence to indicate to the reader that that's what's being used, and that would be helpful. So then n has the form n equals 2k for some integer k. All right, so now we know n can be written as 2k. Now let's turn to our goal. The conclusion is that n squared is an even integer. That's what we want to show. So we need to know something about n squared. So we know something about n. We know n equals 2k. To turn that inf information about n squared, we could take the equation and say square both sides. That's a valid logical step in algebra, in the uh, handling of equations, and so we could do that. We should tell the reader that we're doing that. So we say therefore, indicating a logical step. Then and therefore, pretty much interchangeable. It's up to you. And then we indicate to the reader that what we're going to do is square both sides. So just saying we are squaring both sides, comma, squaring both sides. And then we go ahead and do it. So n squared equals uh, 2k all squared. Okay, so that's the first part of the sequence of uh, equal signs here. Now, looking ahead, what we actually want to know about n squared is that it's 2 times something. So we'd like to massage the equation, or the expression, massage the expression so that it looks like 2 times something. Well, in fact, there are 2's in there, so let's just go ahead. The logical flow here is first to expand everything to obtain 4k squared, and then to isolate the 2, factor it out as 2 times, and then whatever's left over, which is 2k squared. So remember to keep the uh, equal signs in the flow of logic. So um, n squared equals 2k squared. That first equal sign came from the first step, which was squaring both sides. And then the next equal sign was uh, the next thing you would do, which is expanding. And then the third equal sign in this flow here is factoring out the 2. Keep them in order from left to right with the order of reasoning, because that helps the reader. OK, so now um, we've recognized that n squared is 2 times something. And it's convenient here for the purposes of recognizing the definition, of making it very clear that this is the definition of evenness, to simply give a name to the quantity 2k squared. So we say let L equal 2k squared. This is assignment of a variable, or assigning a name. We're calling into existence a quantity L, and we're saying let that quantity be 2k squared. Let 2k squared have the name L. Let is a, uh, a little bit um, as if you're a deity, <laughs> and you're allowed to call into existence a new name for something. That's one of the things you're allowed to do during a proof. This is not making any mathematical assumptions. This is simply assigning a name. All right, so now that we've assigned a name, we can write n squared a little more clearly as 2 times l. And that packages up inside a little box, the l. Um, all the complication of the 2k squared, so that you can really see that n squared is just simply 2 times something. And we now have a name for that something so that we can talk about it. All right, are we done? Well, you might think we're done at this point. But in fact, to be very, very careful about the use of this definition, knowing that n squared is 2 times something is not enough. Think back to our example of 3. 3 is 2 times 3 halves. Well, we also have to verify that that L is an integer. So it's not actually hard to conclude it's an integer because it's twice the square of an integer. So we don't actually need to give some argument for that. But it is very important to point out that we've done it. So we write furthermore, giving an additional piece of information which we will need. That's what the word furthermore generally does. Furthermore, L is an integer. So here we're just indicating to the reader that we have, in fact, checked that. They can go and look for themselves. And yeah, OK, it's an integer. But it's very important to point out that that's been checked. It is an incomplete proof unless you actually check that, because otherwise it would be a perfectly valid proof that shows that 3 is even. OK, so finally, we've shown that n squared is 2 times l and that it's 2 times l where l is an integer. 
So therefore, we can conclude that n squared is even. And you might write here, therefore, n squared is even by definition. Again, the word therefore is simply indicating a logical step. And that step is accomplished by use of the definition. So it's common to write by definition.